Southampton versus Brighton. Well, the first thing you do is, uh, sorry, Brighton. Southampton versus <laughs> Brentford. It's Southampton at plus 130. Brentford plus 215. Looks like uh, great value. Uh, the, straight away, you look at the numbers and it's over two and a half with the over being at minus 125. Brentford have scored twice, nearly every single game they've played. And over one and a half is at plus 150 stinch. And the draw looks a good runner again at plus 255. Yeah, that overpriced is uh, shortening as almost as we speak, I think, because last night I think it was minus 115 or even minus 120. So that tells you exactly where all the money is going. Uh, and I, I couldn't agree more, really, with the, with the overs. I struggled to separate these two a little bit. I think Southampton is dangerous to oppose them because I, th- I think they've got a lot of young players that uh, Hassan Hutu is developing with, with, a, with a massive uh, ceiling, really. Um, and we've already, I've been very impressed with their two wins so far this season. Both games, they had to come from 1-0 down against Leicester away and Chelsea at home. Neither of those easy games. And I think it's admirable because the way they finished last season was very um, depressing almost. They, they, they sort of got their survival sorted and then they were on the beach seemingly. And it looked like it was difficult for, for them to get back in the groove. But yeah, very impressed with the job Hasen who was doing. Similar praise, really, if, if not more, for Thomas Frank after his second season uh, with Brentford. They seem to have evolved from losing Christian Eriksen. They put five past Leeds last last weekend. Ivan Tony looking, you know, it, almost, almost as if maybe in contention for the England World Cup squad, um, given the poor form and injuries of, of the likes of Calvert-Lewin and Callum Wilson. Uh, so yeah, I think both teams are in a great position right now. Um, no injury problems to any like major players or anything like that. So, yeah, over two and a half goals looks an easy bet to me. 13 of Southampton's last 18 over 2.5, so 72%. And for Brentford, 13 of the last 17 over 2.5, 76%. And the odds here suggest it's only going to be around a 55% chance. So, given the fact the two fixtures last season, the home teams won 4-1 and 3-0, see absolutely no reason not to back over two and a half goals. Yeah, Marco, here I look at draw half time. I think that both these sides come into the game a little bit respectful of the opposition because it's two athletic sides, but they, they don't keep clean sheets. The only clean sheet I can remember Brentford keeping was when they smashed a Man United side who had left before half time already. I've got this as a potential 2 2 as well. So that brings in the over, it brings in the both teams to score. I just see the spoils could well be down the middle, one point each, and they move on. Yeah, I'm happy just to take the result out of the equation and, and follow sort of Stinch's lead and back uh, back goals again. I've, I've been covering Brentford quite extensively um, on these shows. Um, they've largely been really good fun to follow. Last weekend's game, the 5-2 against Leeds was was pretty exhilarating stuff, actually, for, for neutrals. So really entertaining. Almost four non-penalty expected goals in total in that match alone. 31 shots, 14 on target. And, you know, despite the, the scoreline, Leeds actually generated plenty of really good opportunities in that game. And, you know, Game State may have played a part in their total. But, but you know, since thrashing Man United, Brentford have been quite open defensively. They've allowed six and a half expected goals and 61 shots in four games against Leeds, Palace, Everton and Fulham. You know, not the, the hardest of schedules, really. And they're giving up opportunities there. The key being they've created plenty of their own, over seven non-penalty expected goals in that same sample. And, you know, Ivan Tony in that mood at the minute, you back him to, to put away any chances that come his way at St. Mary's. So, you know, you combine the, the four and against MPXG figures or expect goals figures and we're well above three and a quarter. So, um, and that's just in the last four games, which is really, really high. So, you know, in raw numbers, uh, the goals have been prevalent too. Five of six, both teams to score winners, four of six, over two and a half goals winners so far this season for Brentford. But their defensive record away from home should be highlighted too. They've kept two clean sheets and 22 away from home since promotion, but they have scored in 16 of those matches themselves. So you've got a 68% hit rate for BTDS and over two and a half goals in Brentford away games since they've come into the Premier League, which is a very high number. Um, And then you've got Southampton, who I do find tricky to read at times. I think Stinch gave a a nice sort of intro into them. They've seen four of six over two and a half winners this season, yet to keep a clean sheet themselves. But they've scored in 18 of 22 home games in the Premier League since the start of last season, which is very, very strong. So, yeah, I'm just back into attack-minded teams with defences you can't trust to to go at it this weekend and uh, hopefully see some plenty of goals. So, uh, over two and a half goals and beat. TTS again at plus money, plus 105. 
Yeah, two uh, flag teams that are going to have a, a real go. Cue the nil-nil. Um, Mitch has got a good one. He's gone with one one two two three three uh prop at plus 375. Listen, again, like we spoke about with the other games, I cannot split these. I could see one of these teams leading 2-1 with like... 10 minutes to go and the other team Brentford score late goal Southampton are at home so again the draw at plus 255 and remember if you do go with a draw it's always it's always the forgotten result let's have a little look at the official picks here and I do like draw half time as well where they might just take a while to feel each other out uh, Marco here has gone with over two and a half goals both teams to score at plus 105 over two and a half goals at minus 125 and the draw at plus 255 that is a mirror image of game number one that we uh, that we covered. I just think that I'm just going to go with the uh, value this week. And if I hit like a 40%, I'm going to be making good, good money. 